What's up guys, just a heads up for people that follow my channel, Let There Be Flight has finally been updated for Hotfix 1.61, which was the DLSS 3 hotfix uh, on February 2nd, and now it is working as of the 9th of Feb, so that's just a heads up for everyone, and I also want to go over the installation for people that are new or have had trouble getting it working completely like you've tried and it just doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to actually cover a few issues that people have ran into and basically show you how to make sure, uh, provided there's no stability issues on your system, that is, um, or other mods interfering. If you're only trying to get Let There Be Flight working, I will show you the foolproof way to get it working, at least on Windows 10 and 11. I can't speak for other OSs or pirated versions of the game. Obviously, you need to use older files that are compatible with the old versions of the game, but uh, I'm just going to go over getting it to work through the Steam version. So first off, you want to make sure you've got the DLC installed for RedMod because there was a big update that added RedMod, official RedMod support, and a lot of mods use RedMod these days. So if you've, even if you've got different mods installed that, are, that should be working fine and the posts or the comments say it's working fine with the 1.61 hotfix, if you've got RedMod installed and you're trying to get Let There Be Flight working, the requirement or the dependencies needed, there's actually extra dependencies that are not listed when you go to download Let There Be Flight. So they should be listed. I don't know why they're not. Um, but I'm going to go over that so you can understand why your game wasn't working. It's not a problem with you. It's actually to do with the pop-up that shows you what you need. It's actually incorrect for the Red Mod supported version of the game. Okay. So first off, though, I will go back to the basics on inst manually installing mods and how it works. So when you download a mod, it, it comes in a package called an archive. And what that means is it's a single file, but all the mod files, which might have 20 files inside, are inside that archive. And you have to unpack it into the correct folders. So for Let There Be Flight and all its dependencies, which dependencies are extra requirement files that you need to get the mod working. Um, so you can see up here, I've got all these dependencies open in, in the top windows. Um, all of these dependencies are made by good modders that know how to set up the file pass properly. So if the file pass is set up properly, it basically means when you download the archive and you go to extract here from within the correct folder, all the files will just go to the right place. But if a mod is made by an amateur modder, then the files will just be messy inside the archive. And when you go to extract them, you have to actually drag the files to the correct folders because there's no folder pass inside the mod file. So you have to kind of learn how to check that. And the best way I can describe it is if you're downloading any mod and you're saving it to your Cyberpunk folder, go to preview file contents and it will show you if the folders are set up. So as you can see here, these are primary Cyberpunk folders, uh, archive R6 and red4 extension is a dependency, but basically, um, if you have the Red 4 mod install, installed, it goes to the right path. So you can see that. And the way you can tell if the if the primary paths are correct is you go into your Cyberpunk folder, and you can see here that these are primary folder paths, archive, R6, Red 4 extension, right? So if you know that, if you know how to check that, then any mod you download, this applies to all mods, you go to preview file contents before you download it, and you can see that the folders are set up correctly, R6 and Red 4 extension. See how there's like a path there? That just means when you go to install the archive or unpack the archive, the files will just naturally go to the correct place within the Cyberpunk folder. Okay, so first off, though, we want an extraction tool. I like to use 7-zip just because it's a very small and efficient archiving program that extracts very quickly. And I've used it for like years now. And it doesn't matter what version of Windows you're on, but it's free and it doesn't have any ads or anything like that, like some WinZips or other programs ask you to buy them and stuff like that. And this is just one of the best free archiving tools you can get. And most people will want the 64-bit Windows X64 version. And you can see how small it is too. It's not a big file. It's like a few megabytes. And you can see I've got a copy of it here. It's like 1.5 megabytes. And I'm just going to save over the top of that to show you how it works. And so you download the EXE, which is an installer, and you just click it from your download wherever you've, whatever browser you're using, you can just click it and run it. So install. And I'm on an SSD, so it'll install in a few seconds. And that's done. Once you've got an archiving program, after it's installed, when you have your mods downloaded, you can just right click and 7-zip will be in the tool menu, toolbar, whatever you call it. So you can see I've got 7-zip and I can use all these functions. The main function we want to use is extract here because we're doing manual installation. And extract files has a problem that can cause issues for beginners. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that really quick. But first, 
You, you may have also noticed here on the left, we've got quick access and I was able to get this to the Cyberpunk 2077 folder very quickly. If you're modding your game or you're new to modding your game, you want this because manual installation is the safest method that doesn't have problems. If you use uh, mod managers and mod installers, yes, they can work, but sometimes they stuff up or if the mod was added to Nexus mods with the incorrect pass, but it was listed as mod manager supported because sometimes modders make mistakes, you'll end up with all these issues that you don't know where the files are supposed to be. And so if you use manual method, you can kind of figure out, okay, that mod just didn't have good pathing and I need to figure out where it goes. And then in the in the mod description, they'll tell you where the file should have went. Uh, usually if they don't have correct pathing, you can at least go into the description and they'll show you, uh, the modder will explain, it goes into these folder paths, right? So, but for, for let there be flight and all the dependencies, you don't have to worry about the pathing. The pathing is good. So you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. But I'm, what I'm going to show you is, so we've got 7-zip installed and we want our quick access on Cyberpunk 2077. So first you just got to know what launcher you have. That might be Epic Games, um, GOG, whatever it is. I'm just going to use Steam as an example, but you go to wherever you know the game is installed and there will be a launcher path in that drive that you've installed the game. So for me, it's C drive, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps common and that's where cyberpunk 2077 is and you want to right click that folder and pin to quick access and it'll put it here on the left and that's also useful for when you're downloading mods when you want to download the mod to your main cyberpunk directory the quick access is also in the download section like if i download here uh manual method and i go to download you can see that slow download and it has quick access on the left i can just make sure it goes into my cyberpunk folder and you can see i've actually downloaded all the dependencies including let there be flight uh for the 1.61 hotfix so i'm going to reinstall this mod and you can see the date today 9 2 uh, i've got the date modified so you can actually see i've downloaded all these just shortly before doing this video and i'm going to show you the extra requirements that aren't listed uh so as you can see back here um so we've already pinned I can close this. We've already pinned Cyberpunk with quick access, so you can access it easily. When you open your file explorer, you just go there and you can get back into your Cyberpunk main directory. This is very important. Now, you can see here when I went to download Let There Be Flight with manual method, it has requirements popping up. There's missing requirements. And you know, I mentioned red mod that was added, official red mod support. You might have red mod added already installed, or you might not have it installed, but a lot of newer mods these days are using red mod. So for uh, for the best compatibility possible, I recommend you make sure you go into your launcher, find your Cyberpunk, go to properties or wherever it is and go to the DLC section, make sure that DLC is installed. And then that's where you need the extra dependencies and they're not listed here. So the dependency is actually for, I believe, red script. And the, the reason this is causing issues for people is because they don't know because um maybe it's mentioned in the description if you go to requirements, or no, not requirements. We'll see if it's even mentioned here. Yeah. So not working. Uh, red mod users. Yeah, here it's in the it's in the description. So if you've been reading descriptions, you won't have a problem. But if you're just following a guide like mine, and we're just looking at the dependencies, and you know, without that thorough explanation, you might miss uh, one of the important notes in the description, and that is a note for red mod users: is you need Cyber CMD, which is another requirement, another dependency. So CyberCMD just improves compatibility with RedMod. So normally uh, in an old in my older video for the 0.5.8 version, which was September, they actually had a note here in the file download section that for RedMod compatibility, you need CyberCMD. But for some reason, um, he stopped adding it to the notes. Uh, this Jack, Dave, Jack M4, Jack M4, Jessic, um, he stopped it adding it to the notes so it's easy to miss and that's where i think people are also going wrong that they're just missing out this dependency and yeah so you just need this mod and i'll link all of these mods down in the description so you're not going to miss it don't worry just as long as you open open the mod up and it's cyber cmd here and when you go to install cyber cmd there's an additional dependency but thankfully it pops up and tells you you also need cyber engine tweaks which is another um all-encompassing uh dependency mod that helps other mods work so you also want to open that in a new tab and that's basically how I update my mods too. If um if there was another big patch and I was going to update Let There Be Flight, first I would see if there's an update or wait for it if the game's not working. Um, because the game will stop working when you've got mods installed and they do a big update that affects those mods. So if the mods are no longer compatible with the game version, 
you'll go to launch the game and there'll be a red script error. So that's where I'd go to Nexus Mods, see if I've got any notification bells for updated mods, or just wait for the updates. And when they finally do update the mod, you go and make sure all the dependencies are up to date too. And the best way you can get notifications for these are make sure you track your mods after you've downloaded them. So track and endorse. And that will basically make sure you get the notifications. So when new files have been added and they've been updated, you can you know go to your file section and this is where it's important. You go to manual download and if you're using a Chromium browser like me, or I think even Edge and some of the other browsers are all work functioning basically the same way, is you just right click all these dependencies and open them in a new tab so that you get all the tabs up here like I've got. So open them all in a new tab and don't forget about CyberCMD, which is linked on the red script page. You just got to copy it and then create a new tab and paste it in there so that you get that, that extra one and Cyber Engine tweaks. So you need these two as well. And yeah, just open them all in new tabs and download them one by one. And I just use a slow download. I don't have premium. Um, it's it's fine. Like slow download still fast because mods aren't that big. And just download them all into your Cyberpunk directory. And because you've got it on quick access, it's going to go to the right place. Now I'm going to show you why the manual method is important. And I know this is dragging the video out. I, I'll try to hit it, keep it under 15 minutes. But um, basically, if you don't use the extract here method, which is where you save the archive into your game folder and extract it from within the folder, the reason I, I recommend to do that is because if the file paths are correct, you cannot stop it up if you use extract here. So in other words, right click, 7-zip, extract here, I can install all the dependencies, including Cyberpunk, and update them all in one go. And it'll all go to the right place because these mods have their correct folder paths. But if I was to have some of these mods or all of them even in my downloads folder, okay, and then I go to extract them to the right place in the Cyberpunk folder, here's what'll happen. I'll go to 7-zip, extract files, and I have to navigate to Cyberpunk, right? Or I'll navigate to it just so you can see what happens. Um, so I'm going to find Cyberpunk, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Cyberpunk, right? So this is the main directory and I've highlighted it. The problem is there's this checkbox that depending on what kind of extraction tool, like you might not want to download 7-zip, but most extraction tools will have some default pathing that they will use. And the problem with default pathing is it will extract the, the archive files into a folder with the name of the archive. And this is what stuffs people up as well. And so basically, if I forgot to uncheck this little box, because you can see path mode is full path names, which is basically the path names inside the mod files, the archives. Um, this little box makes them go into their own folders, and it is me it messes up your installation. So if I just went to go OK and extract these files like this, we'll see. Uh, see, I didn't get any pop-up to overwrite anything. So I've got the mods installed, the older versions. I didn't get an overwrite warning. And so what's happened is, the archive tool has made a separate folder for every mod and all the files have went to the wrong place because the pathing should be in the root folder in the main cyberpunk folder. So I have to go back and um, delete all this. I shouldn't have even demonstrated that, but this is where you get those weird issues where especially if you're new to modding, you'll have no idea what happened and you'll just assume why is my, like, why is my mod not working? So um, how many was that? I don't know how many. Hopefully I've memorized the right. Yeah, so basically all those all those archives went into their own folders and it didn't work. So what you actually want to do, the safe way to do it, because you can just uncheck that box and it should fix it. Like you can go extract files, uncheck this, and you'll be okay. But you might forget every now and then. You might be installing a different mod and you just forget, or it might default to having that checked. Like you can see here, if I go to extract files, uh, I'll uncheck it. And then if I go to 7-zip and extract files, it's still checked because it defaults to that and you have to actually go into the archiver settings and change it and it's even defaulting to the wrong path um you know what i mean like you can actually get files extracted into the wrong place because it just simply defaults to whatever your default is and i have to open 7-zip and go into the settings or whatever program you're using and you have to actually change the default path so that your modding locations are going to the right place so that's why we use extract here is it saves all that hassle all you have to do is make sure you save the archives into the correct game folder and then you can highlight them and instead of going extract files you go extract here and that actually just puts all the files from within the archive directly into the main folder and when when i do it that way it says do you want to re replace these files because it's updating the mod files i can click yes to all and i just installed every single dependency plus let there be flight all in one go and then i can delete the archives i'm done okay 
And then one more thing is if you've done that, like if you followed me and you, you understand what's going on, then the only other thing I can recommend is if you've updated your game or you 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 haven't actually played since you've installed the latest update, um, make sure you go to Red Pre Launcher and go to Properties, Compatibility, and make sure it's set as Run as Administrator because I actually had this setting like it was unchecked. I'm an admin on my computer, so it shouldn't matter. But for some reason, because this was unchecked. I wasn't able to get my game to launch with mods installed. And I don't know which mod was causing the problem or if it was red mod itself, but you want it to run as administrator. Okay. So when I set that, it got my game working um, when my mods were all up to date. So, okay, all that aside, we're going to test it now because I've just reinstalled the mod basically. And we're going to run red pre launcher. And if you're coming from an older version, there's one more step. So you want to make sure uh, enable mods is installed in the pre launcher. Uh, you can launch, if you launch it from the whatever launcher program you're using, it should pop up with this anyway. But one more thing you want to check is the, what is it? Um, so I'm, I'm enable mods is if you go to launch it and you get an error and you're coming from an older update of the game, you want to go into R6 cache and delete this modded folder. So delete it like that. So all it does is delete temporary files that are created by the mods sometimes. And those temporary files, if they're dated, if they're from an older version of the game, can can screw up with the updated version. So you want your game to recreate those mod um, cache files. So it'll recreate that now when I go to launch it. But I'm just doing it live to demonstrate that it's not a problem to delete it. You you not like you don't have to verify your game files. You just want to delete that modded folder. I'm going to empty it all out so you can see I'm like I'm not doing anything funny. And when I go to play the game, it should recreate that modded folder as you see it just popped back up and my game is launching so that's just another step if you get like a red script error after following this guide but provided you're not you don't have any outdated mods installed uh it should just work fine so we're just going to load into i think this is for an older i don't know if this save will actually work because you know we're on a hotfix one but i'll just try and we'll see if I can get into the game and get Let There Be Fly working. I do have a bunch of other mods installed, and I'm fairly sure they're all good because the game launched. But I haven't actually launched into the game before doing this video. I just wanted to, oh, Let There Be Fly stuff updated. I gotta do a video on it and show people if it's working. Uh, so we'll see what happens. There we go. Okay, so it's working. And I'll go to settings, and I'm just gonna check if there's anything fancy added. I uh, know my super resolution 2.1's there with the image sharpening. You know, you can just like see my settings. I use optimized settings just because I don't notice a lot of these. Like you get better performance, and yeah, um, see what FPS I'm getting. I had it capped on 60. If I uncap it, I get about 65. But I am at ultra wide 340 by 440 with FSR. Okay, so let there be flight. Cool. And I'm also using my immersive driving mod, which means that my driving speed is actually very slow. Uh, I can like cruise, and I can also almost slow it down to wait. I don't know if it works with. Yeah, if I hold W and I use my th mouse thumb button with immersive driving mod, I can actually hold a almost cruising steady speed. It's like dropping very slowly. But if I use my um, shift key and let go of W. I can actually go very, very fast. Uh, you can see the speed down in the bottom left. And I can also go back to cruising mode by holding my thumb button with shift. So you can see how the speed's like locked at 328. I can go up to 360 and then I can slowly lower it. I still climbed, it wants to go up to about 320. But anyway, um, that's just to demonstrate that the method that I've, I'm showing you is working, and this is February 9th, uh, February 10th today, actually. Yeah, February 10th, 2023. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helps you out, and if you still need help, uh, just comment down below. Um, but for the most part, if your game's just, like, crashing or something, and you follow this guide properly and you don't have any other mods interfering, it may just be a stability issue with your system. Like, you might actually need to... Um, Stability test your RAM, uh, check your CPU performance, check your temperature, download hardware info and do all that. Uh, I might do a guide if I get people asking for it, but um, it's pretty straightforward stability testing, um, the realm of stability testing that you need to do uh, if you're still getting 
crashes and errors. Because even uh, script errors can be caused by a RAM instability. So your RAM, if your RAM is unstable, when it goes to compile the scripts, it'll it'll stop up basically. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.